Anime Recapped here. Today I'm going to explain a romance harem anime called My First Girlfriend is a Gal. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. It's the first day of a new semester. Second year student Hashiba Junichi can't help but feel bitter about how much the school's environment has changed. While observing his surroundings, he notices that most of the students have already coupled up. Some are openly flirting with their partners and acting all lovey-dovey with each other. When he arrives at his classroom, he is greeted by the dreaded side of his classmates with their significant others. Love is in the air, and he sure as hell isn't breathing it. In the corner of the room, a group of high school boys is huddled together, wallowing about the fact that none of them have gotten girlfriends over the school break. This sad bunch of high school boys turn out to be Junichi's friends, Shinpei, Keigo, and Minoru, and they share these sentiments with him. They talk about how they haven't done anything over the school break. At this point, Junichi thinks to himself and wonders what went wrong since he thought that when he became a high school student, he would finally get a girlfriend and lose his V-card. But for those keeping score at home, Junichi has a total of zero girlfriends and one V-card that's still perfectly intact. Their conversation gets interrupted when a girl enters the classroom and calls Junichi's attention. This girl turns out to be Nene, Junichi's childhood friend. She came by to bring the lunch he left at home. Their conversation takes a mighty sus turn when she asks if he doesn't like girls who look all kitty. So if Luster Junichi answers that tastes change and her childlike self doesn't pique his interests. He then makes her leave after receiving his lunch. And once the dejected girl is gone, his friends hound him. Seeing as they're getting all weird about her, Junichi says that she's just a childhood friend who he thinks of as a little sister. Besides, she looks really kitty too. Junichi's words have the opposite effect on his unfortunate friends and they get even more riled up as they hail Nene as a lollipop with a big chest. To the gallows, boys. The conversation gets interrupted yet again when another girl approaches Junichi and starts talking to him. This time, it's their classmate, Kashi Yui. She mentions that she's glad to be in the same class as Junichi again, and hopes to talk more with him this year. Junichi gets flustered after hearing this, and after their brief conversation, Junichi's buds start giving their unsolicited comments again. Shinpei starts talking about her lack of chest, making Junichi remind him that not everyone is good or bad based on their chest. The other two agree, with Keigo bringing up her pure girl demeanor, while Minoru retorts that the purer the girl seems, the pervier she is. And to this, dear ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Junichi astutely observes that this is the kind of conversation you'd see when you look up the word inexperienced in the dictionary. In chorus, they retort that Junichi would be the cover of that entry before starting a protest, and that protest comes in the form of reading a dirty magazine out in the open. Junichi is appalled by this, but the trio is unmoved, even as their other classmates are giving them dirty looks. In fact, the dastardly Shinpei is doing this on purpose to kill the mood for everyone else. They then lure him into reading one himself. Try as Junichi made to resist the temptation to read in front of others, he eventually gives in. Suddenly, one of their classmates coldly calls their attention. In his shock, he ends up tossing away the magazine. And as he tries to retrieve it, the magazine is stepped on by the classmate. She's none other than Yame Yakuna, the resident gal or Gyaru. She snaps at him to read his little magazine at home before calling him disgusting and walking away. While Junichi is scrambling to apologize to her, he wallows over just how scary the gals are. And for those wondering what this gal business is, it's basically a Japanese subculture where girls emulate popular western trends. Usually it involves bleaching their hair blonde, putting on a lot of makeup, and wearing skimpy clothes. At least that's what zenmarket.jp says. After that incident with Yukana, Junichi's friends urge him to ask her out. They're convinced that gals like to sleep around, so they all see this as Junichi's chance to finally get laid. Though he's against it at first, his hormones take the wheel and he starts fantasizing about Yukana. With his eyes on the prize, he agrees to his friend's plan. One of his friends slip a love letter in Yukana's locker, asking her to meet in a secluded area after school. Surprisingly, Yukana soon shows up in the meeting spot and finds Junichi there, waiting for her. Though he was all for it at first, seeing Yukana drives Junichi's inner turmoil in full swing. He starts doubting whether he should follow his friend's plan and ask her out. But in the end, with questionable images filling his mind, he decides to go through with it. With cool determination, he thinks to himself that he'll show her what he's got, and so, Junichi gets on the ground, bowing deeply to the gal in front of him. Will you go out with me? He yells, his passionate cry piercing the heaven. Gross, Yukana answers, and without missing a beat, Junichi quietly agrees that he is, indeed, gross. Only now does it dawn on him how pathetic his begging act is, knowing that once word gets around, he'll have to say goodbye to any future girlfriends and say hello forever to his V-card. Despite this, Junichi absolutely refuses to stand up because he's a man of indomitable will, and because he can see her underwear from that angle. So even when Yukana tells him to get up, he firmly tells her he won't, surprising her since it's unusual to see someone on his knees be so aggressive. She then asks him why he likes her, which puts Junichi in a total slump. He soon comes up with a brilliant answer of saying that he likes her witchy side, which disappoints Yukana, but the girl is quick to guess that he just wants to get with her to get laid. 
throwing Junichi into the eye of a crisis. Here comes Junichi's second fear. She'll find out that he only wants her for her body. She'll tell everyone, then everyone will avoid him. Goodbye future girlfriends and hello forever V-card. Fortunately, he still has a sliver of sense creeping to him and he decides that now would be a good time to run for the hills. Unfortunately, Junichi's got a devil in his mind and that devil comes in the form of Hormone Man, who is a little too obsessed with staring at Yukana's undies. He beats the sensible part of Junichi into a pulp, forcing the boy to stay there on his knees. Alas, Yukana actually knows why he's maintaining his position there. She proceeds to crouch in front of him and teases him into looking into her skirt again, further mortifying the already humiliated boy. Yukana clearly enjoys the sight of him getting flustered and just how shameless he can be because, in his own words, he's not like any other V-boy. He's a V-boy with no confidence. This all culminates to Yukana having Junichi against the wall. And while he's face to chest with her, the girl says that she likes him. And with a smile, Yukana agrees to go out with him. The following day, Junichi tells his buddies that Yukana's probably going to ruin his high school life and spread nasty rumors about him. His friends all sympathize with him, promising that they'll always be there for him no matter what. But their tune quickly changes when they see that Yukana sent Junichi a suggestive selfie. Suddenly, unpopular Keigo, forever alone Shinpei, and Otaku Minoru are pretending that they don't know Junichi. But when the boy tries to convince them that he and Yukana haven't even kissed yet, Shinpei has a mini aneurysm, asserting that kissing is like breathing for gals. And so Shinpei unveils a natural law that he has discovered, one that's so groundbreaking he can get a Nobel Peace Prize for it, the Karaoke XXX Rule. He urges Junichi to take Yukana to karaoke because according to the rule, they'll pick a dirty song, sing a duet, then wham, bam, thank you ma'am. They'll end up getting in each other's pants. What a scandalous rule. After divulging this information, Shinpei has a full-on aneurysm and dies. And so the verdict, Junichi must invite Yukana to karaoke ASAP. That morning before classes start, while Yu is trying to make idle talk with a very nervous Junichi, Yukana suddenly shows up to greet him. With the girl getting all grabby with him, she casually announces that the two of them are dating. The entire class is shocked to hear this, but the novelty soon wore off. Everything goes back to normal, except for the fact that Junichi now has a girlfriend, of course. After school, Junichi's three friends still can't accept that he started dating Yukana for real, so they abandon and wish death upon him. Though he's left alone, this quickly changes as Yukana invites him to hang out with her. They pass by the school gate where Nana sees the two of them. Confused, she asks why they're holding hands, so Yukana nonchalantly answers that they're dating. This upsets Nene, and she calls Junichi, who she dubs as Onichan because of course she does, a dummy head before running away, crying. Yukana then takes Junichi out to karaoke, which leaves Junichi feeling pretty good about the situation. Remembering the karaoke XXX rule, he thinks something will finally happen between the two of them. He gets flustered, imagining all sorts of scenarios in his head. He eventually loosens up after Yukana chooses an anime song, and they sing it together. He gathers the courage to kiss her, but his momentum shatters when she casually mentions that his nose hair is sticking out. Their karaoke date ends with Junichi's V-card still intact, much to his dismay. However, Yukana is satisfied with everything that transpired and tells him she might go to karaoke with him again, and thus they part ways with joy in their hearts. But little do they know that Yukana's friend has been observing them from a distance. One day after school, Junichi finds a love letter in his shoe locker. Astonished, he begins to look around, carefully holding the letter and making sure no one sees him. Unfortunately for him though, his friends are around and see the love letter and they encourage him to meet with the letter sender. Junichi answers that he can't meet another girl without telling Yukana. So even though he's pretty much only with her to pop his boy berries, he still has it in him to stay loyal. But of course, he's weak to peer pressure, so after some convincing from his friends, Junichi still goes on to meet with the girl who wrote the letter. But to his surprise, she turns out to be another gal, one who has been observing them. She gets close to him and correctly assumes that he's still inexperienced, which sets off a barrage of teasing from the gal, who asks him how he could get so excited over a girl that isn't his girlfriend. Junichi stumbles to the ground and the gal gets on top of him. Right on cue, Yukana catches them in their very compromising position, and she looks horrified to see this. But this is just a false alarm as Junichi quickly learns that the gals are on good terms with each other. Yukana doesn't seem bothered by the fact that her friend, Ranko, just got on top of her boyfriend. Unfortunately, her complacency is a little misplaced as Ranko is secretly swearing to destroy Yukana and Junichi's relationship. The next day, Junichi, Yukana, and Ranko hang out together. The three of them go bowling, dine at a cafe, and shop together. And no matter where they are, Ranko keeps making sure to steal Junichi's thunder and get in the way between him and Yukana. Just as the day is ending, true brash and dangerous looking guys try to pick up Yukana. Though Junichi's clearly scared of the men, he steps up, meekly asking them to leave Yukana alone since she's clearly uncomfortable. Shyly, he also adds that she's his girlfriend. The men are completely unfazed by the shrimpy Junichi and they even shove him to the ground. Fortunately, Ranko comes in and saves the day by taking the guys up on their offer. 
She leaves with him, only to come back minutes later while Yukana's worrying about the hurt Junichi. Ranko claims to have given the guys a little talk, but in reality, she actually gave them a good socking. On the way home, Junichi can't help but feel pathetic since he wasn't strong enough to protect Yukana. In a surprising turn of events, he finds Ranko waiting for him outside his home. She playfully confesses that she might like him after he stood up for them, and with that, she invites herself into his home. Once they're on the sofa, Ranko starts seducing Junichi with her bountiful tadas. She gets on top of him and tries to convince Junichi to just lose his V-card to her now, that he doesn't have to wait for Yukana when she's just right there, ready to make him feel good. Ranko's incessant movements against him make it hard for Junichi to think. He goes blank, almost ready to succumb to her. But when he remembers Yukana, Junichi suddenly snaps out of it. He gathers the strength to push Ranko off him and proclaim that even though he's a loser, he's not going to do it with just anyone. He wants to do it with someone he likes, and Junichi wants Yukana as his first. His words send Ranko in a fit of rage, spurring her to get on top of him again. She aggressively announces that she's not going to let a loser like him get with Yukana. It becomes clear that Ranko is actually quite in love with Yukana, who had always been there for her when she was a lonely child. With that, she asserts that she's going to screw Junichi so hard he'll not want to do it with Yukana anymore. There are probably other ways of achieving this, but you do you, Ranko. Or you do Junichi, in this case. And just in the nick of time, a furious Yukana emerges from the door and tells Ranko to stop. Both Junichi and Ranko are shocked to see her. They start getting nervous over the prospect of Yukana overhearing their conversation. Luckily, she didn't hear it, and the upset girl just thinks that Junichi is about to cheat on her. Ranko quickly explains that she was just testing him to see if he would sleep with another girl, and her explanation quickly pacifies her best friend. Relieved, Yukana thanks Ranko for caring so much about their relationship, which brings Ranko to tears. Next day comes, and Junichi is relieved, thinking that Ranko is going to leave him alone now. But if you speak of the devil, she will appear, and said devil makes Junichi swear that he won't tell Yukana about how she really feels for her. While Ranko is attacking him, Yui can be seen looking at them from a distance, seeing over how Junichi can like someone else beside her. And thus, Hashiba Junichi's peaceful high school life is getting a lot livelier, all because he dated a gal. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.